Hey y'all, welcome to my channel. I am Rafael and I am here to review episode 5 of Drag Race España. We start off with all the queens coming into the workroom right after Arancha's elimination and they're all standing by the table and they're talking and for some reason they don't see it for Hugasio anymore. I'm not sure where this came from but they all started becoming like a bunch of perras. And Hugasio is explaining like, yes, this is my natural face, a much more calmer look to me and everything, you know, because just like I said in my review last week, this was a much more tamed look from Hugasio instead of this artistic look and artistic makeup. And you see Dovima just rolling her eyes like, yeah, mm-hmm, sure. And Carmen says that Poopy should have won the Snatch Game episode instead of Killer Queen, that they just gave it to Killer Queen because they felt sorry for her. And I'm like, damn, like, this is how we're coming now? This is how we're heading into top five? It's just crazy to me how it's already six queens left. I'm like, what? Technically, we're already at top five. Like, I don't want the season to end, y'all. <laughs> I want it to drag on, like how season 13 of US Drag Race went on. I don't want it to end. I like the queens, but I did not notice that we were halfway through the competition already, but it is what it is. I think the issue here is that they didn't see Killer Queen as a threat, and now that she's kind of creeping up towards the end, and like, yeah, this is what I made of, I think they don't like that, and they're intimidated by it. I don't know if Carmen is really intimidated because she seems so confident that she's going to win, but they might be a little shaken. Dovima makes it very clear that they just do not see it for Hugasio. Hugasio should not be here. You should already gone. You should have been eliminated. And Hugasio is just like, uh, you're not on my level. Like, you're nowhere in my radar. And I just love how Hugasio talks in their confessional, like, Esta puta no me quiere ver aquí, pero de aquí no me voy sin una guerra. Hugasio is just so animated with their hands and everything, so I, I find that cute. But the claws are coming out very quickly and very sneaky, and they're coming out sharp. So then the queens come back into the workroom the next day, and they see these three barrels full of grapes, and they're wondering, um, what's going on here? And Killer Queen, girl, what are you doing? We're in the middle of a pandemic, and you just pick one out and you put it in your mouth? Who knows who's touched that? Who knows whose feet it has been on? Like, why are you touching that? Like, don't eat anything from there that you don't know where it came from. That was just so gross. Like, Killer Queen, and you're a doctor? Like, you should know better. What's wrong with you? Then Supreme comes in and then explains to them that they're gonna do a mini challenge called Two Gays in a Barrel. And they have to be partnered up with the pit crew. When they come in, they have these little bags. And each queen has to get a tag. And whichever color they match with, that's their partner that they basically have to go into the barrel and then squeeze as many grapes into the barrel and then whoever has the most juice wins. Dovima gets partnered up with Sagittaria, Carmen gets partnered up with Poopy, and of course, Killer Queen gets partnered up with Hugasio. This challenge was very fun to watch. It was very exciting, very different. I don't think we ever seen this on any Drag Race franchise, but it was hilarious, especially when they play that dun 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 <laughs> I was dying with Carmen and Poopy just dancing with each other and hugging each other really tight and squeezing all the grape juice. And then Hugasio with the sock. That was so nasty. That was so gross. I don't know why I pictured in my head that they had to drink this after. I mean, that would be sick. And Dovima and Sagatari were just struggling. I mean, both of them are two bougie bitches. So what are they really going to do here? And then the winning pair who has the most juice in the bucket ends up being Carmen and Poopy Poison. Then Supreme announces that they're going to be doing role play of this show called Fisico or Kimiko, which I never heard of it, but apparently it's some Spanish teen drama show. But I do know one of the actresses from the show is Ursula Corbero. I love her on La Casa de Papel. That's where I was introduced to her from, but she is such an amazing actress. I mean, at least from what I've seen from La Casa de Papel on Netflix, it's such a good show. I love her voice and her whole badass look. So Ursula, I need to check this show out. And it also has one of the hobbies in it, which they're gonna be directing, and Carmen and Poopy get to choose what character they wanna play for this show. Also, also, Supreme announces that Alaska is gonna be the guest judge, and for a second I'm thinking, wait, Alaska, like, hi. Like that Alaska from the United States or Alaska who? And then it's a completely different Alaska. But I do know of this Alaska, but I never knew their name. I did know her song, A Quien Le Importa. I know that song and I know that she's the original, I think, of the song, but I heard it through Thalia, which is another Spanish singer. And I never knew that that was her. I mean, I heard it on the radio years ago. I mean, when I was little probably. 
And I remember hearing Alaska's version on the radio, but then Talia's kind of went viral, sort of, and then hers was popular. So I heard both mixes. So it was interesting to know that this was the person that was responsible for that song. It's one of my favorite songs, by the way. But whose version do y'all prefer better? Talia's version or Alaska's version of the song? Who do y'all prefer? So then the queens sit around the table and they start discussing what role they want in this show. And for the most part, everybody got what they wanted. Sagatari and Dovima, they had a little, you know, issue between their character because they kind of wanted the same one. But eventually they squashed it and everybody got a role. They're just looking at Killer Queen practice with that dog that Arancha had on the runway. And Killer Queen is just making that with it and everything. And I'm thinking, wait, there's puppy play on the show? We're bringing that onto the show? Okay. By the way, can we talk about one of the Javi's look that he had on? The overalls with the striped shirt and the red socks and the yellow glasses? He looked really nice in that outfit. He looked like a fashionable version of Chucky the doll. Javier, if you're watching this, I need you to send me that outfit quickly. So Poopy was the first one and Poopy genuinely was the only one who made me laugh. Poopy just has this natural comedic side to him that he doesn't really have to do much. He literally just stood there and the hobbies were just laughing all repeatedly nonstop throughout the entire scene. But some of those moans were a little kinky. She just kept moaning louder and louder and louder for a second. I thought she was gonna shove that phone inside her or something. <laughs> and then Hugasio and Sagataria come out and this is not fair. I did not like how they did not give any type of direction to Hugasio, but they were giving Poopy Poison a bunch of direction like, oh, do it this way, do it this way. No, maybe you should change it like this. And cut. They didn't direct them at all. They were just looking all awkwardly like, yeah, so this is stupid. Um, we're gonna put you in the bottom two. Okay. Sagataria wasn't funny either. I mean, Sagataria was just kind of safe because they were looking at Hugasio the entire time, flop. And then Carmen came out and then the Javis were just laughing as if this was the funniest thing ever. Like, ah. <laughs> oh my God, did you see Carmen put a banana in her mouth? <laughs> It just was not that serious to me. I'm like, okay, Carmen, that was cute with the banana, but y'all are trying to, what, favor her or something? And Hugasio even said it in their confessional that uh, they're not telling me what to do, like if I'm doing good or bad or what I should do. So it's just like, hello, y'all are not directing. Y'all are not doing what you're supposed to be doing. That is helping the queens out. But, and then it's Killer Queen and Dovima's turn. And theirs was interesting, I guess. I mean, Killer Queen, I wasn't sure if it was funny or if it was too much or if it's extreme. I'm not sure. I mean, it was just kind of borderline cringe. And the hobbies, again, they didn't really direct the way they were directing with Poopy. Again, Poopy got all the direction, but Killer Queen didn't get anything either, just like Hugasio. So it's just like, okay, what are y'all painting out here? Y'all trying to purposely sabotage these queens because technically, Dovima didn't do shit either. Dovima was just sitting there with a thong on with her lip like this the entire time and wasn't really doing anything. Then Carmen came with the banana and that's when the hobbies lost it again and were just laughing hysterically like, <laughs> oh my God, they just Carmen with the banana. <laughs> it just still was not that serious, but I mean, whatever, if that's what y'all into, that's what y'all into. So I just, I don't know. I feel like part of this was like sabotage a bit and pick and choose who y'all wanted to help out because y'all did not point out Sagataria and Dovima being just as terrible as the other two. I mean, technically everybody was bad except Poopy and maybe Carmen. Everybody else should have been in the bottom four. This is where things start getting a little interesting and a little spicy because then the queen comes back into the workroom and you can feel tension when they're all standing around the table and they're discussing what challenge they won and everybody has a main challenge won for the most part except Poopy and Dovima, I think, unless I'm forgetting it. And they're basically saying, uh, yeah, that first win that Hugasio has, I honestly think that it should have went to Carmen. And I'm thinking, wait, 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 why are we bringing that up? No, Hugasio won that fair and square. I mean, it could have been a tie. It really could have been any one, honestly. I mean, you could have just flipped the quarter and whoever won, won, because they were both that good. And they're trying to discredit Hugasio, this whole competition. Poopy poison, like, I cannot believe it. You said, um, I think you should be going home tonight. I'm like, damn, no, 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 Hugasio. You played it way too nice, because if I was you, I would have been like, hold on, y'all, I'm gonna just go over there, grab a chair so I can come back and whack y'all in the head with it. There's just no way you're gonna talk shit about my drag in front of me. And Hugasio was just so nice about it. I mean, Hugasio said, Dovima, you're a shitty person. And Dovima is just such a bitch. Like, 
The we must talking all of this shit when she was the first one to be in the bottom two, the very first episode that Hugasio won. Dovima, your head is too far up your ass. If anything, you're a cheap version of Violet Chachki, but okay. And they just continue to tear down Hugasio like, yeah, no, their drag is very weird looking and they just want you here week after week because they need a freak. They don't really like your drag. It has no meaning. Like your drag is just a mess. It's just a bunch of shit put together with no concept behind it. Like what? Where did this come from Dovima? I mean, are we not seeing certain things on camera? Like where is this animosity coming from? And I wonder, do they just see Hugasio as a threat? I honestly think that that's what it is because there's no way that y'all are talking all this shit to Hugasio when Hugasio hasn't done anything. All their looks have been good. Yeah, they were in the bottom two last week. And maybe comedy is just not their thing. Hugasio is naturally funny in the confessional more say than in a challenge. But that doesn't mean that their drag is not good. Their drag is extremely, extremely good. And you could tell by the audience of the show and on Twitter and online that they all live for Hugasio's drag. It's something new, something refreshing. And then Carmen, Sagataria, and Ovima, they go over to the vanity and they're talking and Carmen says, yeah, I think this is the episode that Hugasio goes home at. And I'm just shocked at how all these queens are turning on <laughs> Hugasio. Like, damn, that is so fucked up. Also, I'm not sure if y'all remember or y'all forgot, but wasn't there supposed to be an issue between Sagittaria and Dovima? Remember the first episode? They did not like each other and they were gonna explain how they had beef and they stopped talking because of some guy because they lived together. So where did that go? Was that just for storyline so they could make it this far or they don't get eliminated in the first episode? What was that about? Or did I miss it? Or did somebody clear that up? Mm -mm -mm. Look at them trying to produce the show so they won't get eliminated. Okay. So then it's finally runway time and Supreme comes out in this red latex look cover with a bunch of pink tool. And I kind of wish that pink tool wasn't there. I kind of wanted to see what the look underneath would have been. I mean, it was it a big long bodysuit that's just made of red latex or it's just red latex boots with a corset or something because I kind of wanted to see that. The tool was cute, but it was a little messy on top, so I'm not sure, and I don't get what the flower thing was about, but maybe that's her version of art. And then she walks down the runway, and of course she flirts with the hobbies, like, yes, Poppy, if you had a paintbrush, would you put it inside my paint bucket? Huh? Would you draw me like one of your French girls? Huh? I'm ready for you. Anna Locking is also there, and Alaska's also there too. The other Alaska. The category for the runway is Spanish art. The first one on the runway is Dovima Nurmi, and she comes out looking like a shower curtain, and it's inspired by a painter that she really likes called Dali. This look was inspired from an actual painting frame, like an actual painting frame. And when they were walking around, it looked really good. I love the makeup, I love the red blush, I love the blue around the eyes. I just really love the, the face. I love that it captured the face so beautifully because the look was down here, and then the face was just all bare up there and with the nice wig and everything and the nice earrings that look like soap. So I thought she was just taking a whole shower with the whole look, the whole curtain and everything. This was cute. And then Poopy Poison come out in an inspired look from Las Meninas. And this was, oh my God, this look a mess. I mean, I thought she had a mop on her head for a second. It just looked like they rolled out of bed and put on a bunch of blankets, a bunch of pillows, and then put a mop on their head. I mean, this is not cute, Poopy. I mean, I get it that you're hilarious and you're funny, but I see that the runway looks are just not your strongest suit here. And it's okay, I guess, but damn, this look was just not it. And then the makeup was kind of powdery. I mean, we were kind of going for last Menina's look, but yeah, no, this Menina was a Menino. Next look was Killer Queen. And I know where this look was inspired from, from the clock painting of Dolly. And I enjoyed the look. I thought it was cute. I had to rewatch it a couple times to see if I actually liked it or not. I mean, there was a bunch of clocks, which I loved it. It looked like it was melting on her body. I love the spoons around the neck as a necklace. I love everything about the look. It was very artsy to look at. I mean, there were so many pieces to it. She basically looks like my room after not cleaning it for a couple days. And then Hugasio comes out and this look was beautiful. This look was art. This look was everything. I'm sure that Hugasio had a great time with this look. Hugasio can literally turn their face into anything. I mean, we've seen from this whole entire season that Hugasio literally has a variety of looks and this is no different. I mean, that makeup was so good and the mustache and the colors, it was just so much to look at. It was just like a bunch of paintings put together. It looks really, really good, Hugasio. And I still can't believe this episode turned out the way it did with that look, but... And then Sagataria comes out and this was actually a disappointing look from her. I mean, from what she's given all seasons, this is probably the worst. 
This is so simple. I mean, I get your reference and everything, but if it wasn't for the hand coming out from the side, making it look somewhat cool, the whole look would have been completely basic. I mean, it is, even with the hand, but yeah, I don't know what this was, Agataria. What was she thinking with this? I mean, it's art and you literally have just a flower on your head and you have this giant bed sheet around you and you see how she almost tripped a couple of times because she kept walking and even Supreme was like, oh, watch your step, you're about to fall, bitch. Sagataria, this look was a big no. And then Carmen comes out dressed in a kindergarten project and I don't know what this was either. I mean, it looked like a bunch of three-year-olds just drew all over her and was just like, okay, mommy, here's my drawing I did at school. Put it on the refrigerator. This was just so simple and basic as well as Sagataria. I mean, it was right above Sagataria. I mean, we're being honest. No, because Poopy Poison had a really terrible look too. But I don't know if it was worse than this. It was simple. I mean, this runway was a little bit sketchy. I just really didn't see art from this. I just saw homework due tomorrow at 11 in the morning from your three-year-old. And that's what I saw. I didn't really see anything here that was special. And then when the paint started squirting out, that was just a little gag. I mean, it was a stunt. And I mean, if it wasn't for that, I think the whole look would have been complete garbage. And I know production was probably pissed because they're like, bitch, you put paint all over this fucking floor. We did not pay anybody to clean this shit up. Like, can somebody get a mop? Carmen, I don't know about you. I think you need to be put in the bottom too, just to like, you know, put a fire up your ass or something because I think you're resting on what everybody has said about you for the whole season. And now you're a little confident in it because this look was just so blah. So then the judges start critiquing each queen one by one on their performance and their look and they just kind of let the Vima do me like pass. I mean, yeah, the look was cute and it was nice, but the performance wasn't there either. I mean, what else did she really do besides just look like she was chewing gum? Like, personally, I don't see her winning because she's too much of a biatch and she has the, like that cold look. And I don't think Dry Race España season one will want that as their winner, but I could be wrong. And for the most part, everybody else got good critiques, except Killer Queen, where it was just like, okay, you are doing way too much. We try to direct you. No, you didn't, Hobbies. Like, no, y'all didn't. Like, y'all were just letting her go up in flames in front of y'all. Y'all didn't really do much. I mean, maybe y'all gave a critique here and there, but what from we saw, it wasn't really much. And they told Hugasio that they didn't do good in the challenge and Sagataria, you did good for what was there. I mean, it was a hot mess, but you were so good in it. And I'm just like, okay, she was okay, but I wouldn't say she was like amazing or anything. I mean, it is what it is. Hugasio may have been bad, but Sagataria wasn't any better either. I mean, Sagataria was just there. It just made her look good because she was next to a flaming mess. But other than that, she wasn't really anywhere up there either. They said that Carmen stole every scene that she was in, which, I mean, I guess is true. But then again, what do you really have to compete with, you know? So Carmen, she kind of saved herself with her role. That was a really good choice of her to pick that specific role. And I'm glad that Anna Locking told Sagataria, I mean, what's your look? I mean, you got painting on your head and I don't understand what this is. It was just a bunch of flowers. This is very basic. But then Alaska wants to say, oh no, I thought it was very, very good. It was so good. I mean, very basic, but it was so beautiful on you. But again, you were just praising another queen for doing the most and having so much and more is more. But you said the opposite for Sagataria. And I think the only reason why Sagataria got saved here with these comments was because she's just naturally pretty. And just like Hugasio said earlier, if you're not a fashionable queen, if you're not skinny or anything like that, then you're kind of just put in the back and you're kind of forgotten about. That's what everybody wants to see, a fashionable, skinny person who comes out on the runway and the most basic things, and they look good, and that's what people eat up. Hugasio is really somebody, I think for the most part, that everybody has really circled around because this is something new to Drag Race. A breath of fresh air, and that's what we all like to see on Drag Race, something different. We don't want all the queens to look the same. I mean, we could say the same thing for Duvima and Sagatari, I mean, Sagatara, you look like Aquaria, so what does that say about you? And Dovima, again, we have like 20 other queens that look like you all over other Drag Race franchises. So, I mean, what are y'all really saying? And then Supreme asks the shady question, who should go home tonight <laughs> and why? And of course, everybody chose Hugasio. That was so fucked up. I mean, they're just intimidated because they don't understand that type of art that is their drag, but again, their drag is amazing. And Hugasio says Killer Queen, just because of the critiques of they were a little wishy-washy, but it's just, it's just, I don't even know how to feel about that because Hugasio was one of my favorite. I thought I would see Hugasio later on, but then again, 
I guess if I step out of my feelings, did I just like Hugasio for their runways and what they brought in something new? I was letting them just kind of fly by through the competition like that because technically last week in Snatch Game, that was terrible. So when was the last time Hugasio actually did something good in the competition? That I can't remember, but but were they deserving of going home this episode? That's questionable. And then backstage, Hugazio tells Sagataria that they feel kind of betrayed because you said my name on stage that I should go home when I helped you in that performance earlier. I made you look good. Just because I look a hot mess, you look good and you threw me under the bus basically. And yeah, I mean, I kind of agree with that. I mean, it's your partner, but at the end of the day, it's drag race and you gotta do what you gotta do to win. So <laughs> if you gotta throw somebody underneath the bus, that's what Sagatari is gonna do. Sagatari doesn't make sense when explaining herself, and I'm glad that Poopy called it out because Sagatari is just all over the place. She was literally just like, Yes, Hugasio, I chose you because you were wearing blue, and blue reminded me of the sky, and the sky reminded me when my mom used to make me pancakes, and I'm allergic to pancakes, but I like syrup, and I used to eat waffles, and you just have a lot of colors going on. I like cheeseburger with fries, and you're wearing red, and red reminds me of ketchup, and I don't really like ketchup on my hot dog, but hot dogs are good too. But I I like going to a barbecue you know what i'm saying so that's why i had to choose you you know it's nothing offensive it's nothing personal it's just always all over the place with sagatari she never makes sense it's like she's trying to be deep with something but she's just like she comes off like a puzzle it's just like okay you're missing a couple pieces here because i'm not getting it and killer queen starts getting emotional probably because of the critiques and probably because she knows she's gonna be in the bottom too it's such a shame because killer queen is so sweet and hugasio is so sweet too and i know that a lot of people like hugasio and <sighs> it's just such a shame how it plays out and so then the queens finally get back on stage and one by one they are being called safe until there's two which is killer queen and hugasio and oh my heart like i like both queens and it's such a shame that they were in the bottom but i could kind of see how hugasio was in a killer queen not so much to be honest i think that the bottom two should have been sagataria and dovima or at least Sagataria and Hugasio because Sagataria's runway, I mean, what was that? I mean, that was kind of terrible, sis. That was very basic. I mean, you and Poopy have the most basic looks on the runway. Yours more than Poopy, but they have to listen to a song called Espectacular by Fangoria, who Alaska, the guest judge, is also part of. And the song starts up and I'm thinking, okay, how is this gonna go? I don't know, this is a techno song, so I'm not really sure if this is Hugasio's type of song and it for sure wasn't because, I mean, technically both of them did sloppy. This whole lip sync was just kind of sloppy. I don't, I did not enjoy watching this. Killer Queen had her moments, but I think where she fucked up was when she did that split. I don't know what that was. I mean, I'm just gonna blame it on the outfits that neither one of them could really move a lot because that split was just crunchy. That split looked like it came from the painting that she was inspired because it was in slow motion, it was melting, it was gross. It was just a mess. I'm like, damn, Killer Queen, y'all could have edited that out a little bit. <laughs> But eventually the judges were living more for Killer Queen because Hugasio, you could just tell that it was way out of their element and they look awkward and cringy just trying to dance and keep up with Killer Queen. And eventually Killer Queen ends up winning the lip sync and Hugasio has to go home. I just can't believe it. No shade to Poopy, but I'm shocked that Hugasio went home before Poopy Poison. No shade, but shade. <laughs> and that's that, y'all. Now we have a top five. I cannot believe this. So we got Dovima, Sagataria, Carmen, Poopy Poison, and we have Killer Queen. I don't know. It looks like it's gonna be Carmen's game. I think Carmen's gonna win, to be honest, unless it's Poopy or Killer Queen. That's my top three, I think. It's gonna be Killer Queen, Poopy Poison, and Carmen, but anything could happen because I did not see Hugasio going home like this. I really thought they were gonna be at least in the top four, but here we are, anything is possible on Drag Race. And if I was Hugasio, my goodbye message on the mirror would have been, malditas perras, que ningunas de ustedes ganen esta competacion. Adios. That would have been it, but it was so cute when Hugasio left and you just see their silhouette in the dark and they just dab. <laughs> Like, so cute. Hugasio will be missed. I'm gonna miss their runway looks and I'm gonna miss their confessional. 
Yo voy a ganar esta competición y esta rueda es mía porque hoy yo voy a ganar esto, ¿ok? I'm really gonna miss that and it's just such a shame. I mean, we'll see how this competition turns out, y'all. What did y'all think about this episode? Do y'all think that Hugasio should have went home? Do y'all think that the bottom two was fair? Who was your favorite look on the runway and who do y'all think is gonna be the top three, let alone the winner? But that's that, y'all. Let me know in the comments. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe and follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Bye, y'all.